Coming up on Doctype, we'll show you how to scale and rotate just about anything, as long as it's on a web page, of course. Then, we'll show you how to turn any web page into a web service. If you like Doctype, then you're in luck, because it's time for Doctype. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by Access Conference and GoDaddy. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that thinks JavaScript is a decaf latte, or a developer who can't tell his margin from his padding, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you the emperor of the interwebs. Alrighty. So, isn't that the shirt that you wore last week? That's very astute of you, Nick, but it actually is last week. It is last week. <laughs> We actually are going to front-end conf, which would now be in the past. But it's in our future. It's in our future. Yeah, anyway, time is fun. Uh, hope we saw you at front-end conf. <laughs> but anyway, uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to scale and rotate elements using the transform property. And we're on to part two of YQL. Alrighty, let's check it out. CSS3 introduces the concept of transforms. Basically, it's a bunch of functions that all stem from the transform property, and in this episode, we're going to be going over some of the basics. Transforms can be in either 2D or 3D, but today, we're going to be taking a look at 2D transforms. When used in combination with transitions and animations, you can do some really neat stuff, but that's outside the scope of this episode. For now, let's start off basic. The first thing to do is to type out the transform property using the WebKit vendor prefix. More on that in a second. Next, you can apply a nice variety of functions to the transform property, and today we're going to look at two. First up is the scale function. Using scale, you can quickly resize an element along the x-axis, y-axis, or both. You simply type scale, and then in parentheses you type your arguments. The first argument is the x-axis, and the second is the y-axis. The values you pass to the scale function aren't actually pixel or percentage values like normal. Rather, you pass a multiple. So for example, if you wanted to scale down the x value by half, you would type 0.5, and if you wanted to scale up the y value by one and a half times, you would type the number 1.5. Right now, WebKit and Firefox both support 2D transforms, and they work exactly the same. By changing the WebKit vendor prefix to moz for Mozilla, all the examples in this episode should work fine in Firefox. Next up, let's take a look at how to use transforms to rotate our page elements. Using the same WebKit transform property, you can also apply a function called rotate. You simply type out the word rotate and then put parentheses afterwards. Inside the parentheses, there's just a single argument which takes the form of a CSS angle. A CSS angle can be expressed in radians or degrees. So let's say that you wanted to rotate your element by 45 degrees. You would simply pass 45 degrees to the function, and the element would get rotated. It's as easy as that. Now, if you wanted to rotate an element in the opposite direction, you could go all the way around the 360 degree circle. But an easier way to express this is to use a negative number, such as negative 15 degrees. The powerful thing about transforms is that you can use these functions in combination. So if you wanted to scale the x and y while also rotating the element, you would just put the functions after the single transform property and separate them with spaces. We'll be revisiting transforms in a future episode, but for now, Jim is going to tell you more about YQL. Stay tuned. It can be tough keeping up with all the latest in the development world when you're working like crazy. That's why you need to check out Axe as Conference 2010, a conference in Orlando, Florida, dedicated to helping you learn new stuff and improve your craft. From October 28th through the 30th, you'll learn the latest techniques and tips for being an agile Ruby on Rails developer with hands-on workshops, sessions, open spaces, lightning talks, and more. For the past two years, this conference has sold out, so go to accessconference.com today, enter the code DOCTYPE, and get 15% off. We hope to see you there. In the last episode, we saw how to use YQL to consume web services. Now we're going to take a look at how to use the HTML YQL table to turn any web page into a web service. 
YQL offers one table that's particularly useful, the HTML table. The HTML table allows us to load any web page and extract information from it. This is particularly useful if you want to create a web service for your site, but don't have the time or ability to create an official API. For instance, if you wanted to get a list of all Doctype episodes, without using the RSS feed of course, you could use this query. We select everything, and we are using the HTML table. When we use the HTML table, we need to pass two pieces of information to the where part of the query. The URL of the page we want, and the XPath expression of the elements we want to select. If you've not used XPath before, there are some great tutorials online, and we may cover it in the future, but it's a way to select elements in an XML document. In this call, we want all the divs with class episode. In our case, we start with a double slash, which means our expression may be at any depth in the XML tree, not necessarily at the root. We then say div because we are looking for div elements, and then we open square brackets. And this means we're going to restrict based on the attributes of that element. To restrict a class, we say at class equals episode. The results from the HTML table when using JSON resemble the structure of the HTML of the data you're trying to retrieve. Since our results were div, the results.div object will be an array containing all of our episodes. Each of these objects will have a class attribute of episode, an ID attribute that is the ID of the div, and they will also have an A attribute and a div attribute, since each of our episode divs contained an A tag and a div tag. Inside of the div tag is an h4 tag, which has an a tag inside of it. We can then call content to get the title of our episode. Similarly, if we got the href attribute of the a tag, we would get the URL of the episode. Since YQL offers a JSONP interface, it's actually pretty easy to get a query into your page. But this piece of jQuery-based JavaScript will save you some typing and clean up your code. We are creating a YQL function that takes a query string and a callback function. Inside of it, we have the YQL URL, and we create a data object for our parameters. We set the format of our data object to JSON and Q to query. We then call jQuery.get with the YQL URL, our data, our callback, and tell it it's JSONP. jQuery will then do all the work to connect your callback to the JSONP callback. To use this function, we just call YQL, pass it a query string, and a callback function, and it's as simple as that. Now this code could be easily translated into any AJAX framework that you like. It's not very complicated, but it does clean up your code quite nicely. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you gonna go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctite.tv from? So we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you gonna use? Enter the code DOCTYPE3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply see site for details get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com that's it for this week until next time be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype tv on twitter and if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of doctype send us an email at questions at doctype.tv and if you subscribe via itunes or rss you'll never miss an episode of doctype so come on why not so until next tuesday remember that every great web page starts with doctype